Hello and welcome back to TJA Economics, where today we're looking at Year 13 Microeconomics Theory of the Firm or Business Economics. We're going to be looking at monopsony markets, labour monopsony markets, and the role that trade unions can play in those markets. So, a monopsony market then is one in which there is only one buyer of a good or service, rather than a monopoly, which you may have seen previously, which is there is only one seller of a good or service. So, the example I'll be using today is nursing in the UK, which I believe is a monopsony market. Given that in the UK there are 730,000 nurses registered, most of whom do work for the National Health Service or the NHS. Additionally, 83% of all money spent on healthcare in the UK is spent in the public sector. And so I think we can safely assume that the NHS is the largest and indeed only employer of nurses in the UK. So, in terms of the actual diagram for this labour market, we can set it out like this. We've got wage rate and quantity of labour. We have our downward sloping demand for labour curve, along which is also the MRP curve. Then we have the upward sloping ACL and MCL curves, the ACL being the supply of labour, of course. And so, if this market were to work competitively, it would end up being allocatively efficient, where the average cost of the labour, or the wage rate, is equal to the marginal revenue product of that labour. And this is efficient because the average cost or wage of that labour is equal to the revenue that it creates for the employer. And indeed, there is no deadweight loss. And as this green box shows, the actual wages paid to workers in total is maximised when the market is allocatively efficient. So again, this is if the market were competitive, if it was not a monopsony. However, as we'll see, the market for nurses is a monopsony. So, as I say, but we established earlier that the NHS is the only major employer of nurses in the UK. That means that the NHS does have monopsony power, and therefore we can't consider the labour market for nurses a competitive market, and so it will not be allocatively efficient. Instead, the NHS will try and exploit their monopsony power to force wages down. And what does this look like then? So we've got our competitive equilibrium there with W1 and QL1. But what we'll see is that due to their monopsony power, the NHS will try and force wages down for nurses and also will try to reduce the amount of labour they actually hire. And so wages will fall from W1 to W2 and the quantity of labour will fall from QL1 to QL2. However, at QL2, the value that that worker creates, W3, is actually higher than the wage they're receiving, W2. That means the green box of total wages paid is much smaller. There is a profit there that the firm receives, and there's even a triangle of deadweight loss. The yellow profit box there comes from the fact that the workers are creating value W3 for the firm, but they're only being paid W2. And so the difference between those two is what the firm receives as profit. Here then, we can see the two markets side by side. On the left, we have a competitive market where they have reached allocative efficiency. And we can see that green total wages box is much bigger than it is on the right hand side when we have the uncompetitive monopsony market. You can see the green box getting much smaller. And so we would expect to see some impacts in real life that we can see on the diagram. For example, we would expect to see lower wages. We can see wages fall from W1 to W2. We would expect to see labour shortages, i.e. the quantity of labour falling from QL1 to QL2. And we would also expect to see some inefficiencies, the deadweight loss. So, do we actually see these in real life? Well, I would argue we can. So, for example, low wages. Between 2010 and 2021, nurse pay in the UK has fallen by 7.4% in real terms. So yes, wages are being made much lower. Do we see labour shortages? Well, you can see in 2018-19 there was roughly 30,000 vacancies in the nursing sector. And that's only set to rise over the next sort of 5 to 10 years. And so yes, I would argue we do see labour shortages. And then finally, do we see inefficiency? Well, actually, in a survey of NHS nurses, 95% of them said that they believed that their patients' health was at risk because of the shortage of nursing. If that's not an inefficiency in the nursing sector, I don't know what is. And so, yes, we can see these impacts in real life. However, as I said, trade unions do play a role in this. The Royal College of Nursing is the biggest trade union of nurses in the United Kingdom, 
with just shy of 500,000 members, just shy of half a million members. And so we can analyse the impact that trade unions will have too. Given, like I say, that most nurses are a member of the Royal College of Nursing and there are other unions too, this actually kind of becomes a monopolist, i.e. these trade unions are the only seller of nursing labour. And so this leads to a situation where you have the monopsonist, the NHS, facing a monopolist, i.e. the trade unions. And there's a name for that situation, countervailing power. This means that whilst the monopsonist will try and push wages down, the monopoly trade unions will work to push them back up. And again, we can show this diagrammatically. So we start here in our situation of allocative inefficiency. You can see the deadweight loss. You can see the profit in the small green box. But look what happens if the trade union band together with their 500,000 members and they say, we will not accept a wage below a certain minimum. You can see what actually happens is they can force the wage back up towards allocative efficiency. And so look, whilst the monopoly is trying to force wages down, the trade union is forcing them up. And so they meet in the middle at allocative efficiency at W min and QL2. Here, there's no more deadweight loss. The workers are paid more, that green box has grown, and more workers are hired as well, QL1 to QL2. So, a summary then. A firm that has monopsony power will try to force wages down and hire fewer workers in order to make more profit. This will result in worse outcome for workers and deadweight loss in the market, so workers will be paid less and fewer will be hired. However, trade unions can use their countervailing power in order to increase wages and employment back up to the allocatively efficient level. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on monopsony. It's a very technical, very tricky topic, but if you can really get a hold of the diagrams, you should fly through. Do feel free to subscribe here, hit the bell and get notifications, follow me on Instagram, follow me over on Twitter or X, and I'll see you for the next video.